We grow using 95% less water, 50% less fertilizers, zero pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. Agriculture produces about 60% of our freshwater contamination. It also uses approximately 70% of our freshwater. So those are trends that are tough. Arable land, the world has lost a third of its arable land in the last 40 years. Population growth, trends in urbanization, and this category of food that we focus on, leafy greens, has, according, in the U.S., according to USDA, approximately 62% spoilage. So there are inefficiencies in the current supply chain and all these macro trends that lead one to the conclusion that we need a new paradigm to feed our planet. We grow without soil, without sun as well. Our growth media is a type of cloth. We use a system of aeroponics, which means we missed nutrition to the root structure. The cloth barriers, the, the pesticides, and I mean the fertilizers, so the leaves have a very fresh experience, like an uncontaminated experience. So we're able to harvest and sell without even washing. It's the washing component that often takes a contamination from a localized contamination to a widespread contamination. So by eliminating the washing process, we also eliminate a major danger point where contamination is spread to a macro contamination. From a nanoscience standpoint, looking at the foundations in the earlier days of that company, when you work in a lab, it's about isolating variables, testing assumptions, and continuing from there. At Aero Farms, in fully controlled agriculture, we're able to do the same with plants. Versus, like, imagine a greenhouse, just sun, a cloud, less cloudy, that's a variable that's hard to control. With fully controlled agriculture, we're able to isolate variables and really test our assumptions of what, grow, what creates plants to grow in a certain way or a different way. And that allows us to really focus on the data and get as much out of it as possible. Today, we're building our ninth facility. It's located in Newark, New Jersey. It is also the largest facility in the world. In it, we grow leafy green vegetables. By leafy greens, think kale, arugula, spinach, Asian greens, mustard greens. In fact, we've grown about 250 different varieties. Part of our ambition is to bring back heirloom varieties that have been lost over generations. We have free salads available for the people at Arrow Farms frequently. And also frequently, people eat the salads without salad dressing. And it's not that at Aero Farms our people are so health conscious, it's that we could create a pulpery, pulpery of flavors, of different varieties, peppery, bit, bitter, sweet, different spices that carry the food itself that, where you don't need to put a lot of fatty salad dressings on top of it in addition. We want everyone to experience that. So we are constantly exploring with new varieties, and part of that is exploring, trying to connect with different breeders, seed breeders, and encouraging that new experimentation, that new variety showing where there could be a market for these seeds that also sometimes are very hard to grow. So some plants, the reason why they're not prevalent is because they're hard to grow and they could only be grown in some areas at very small parts of the year. At Arrow Farms, we could create that environment to make the seeds, to allow the seeds to grow year round. Our productivity is approximately 75 times higher per square foot, square meter, than a field farmer. To do this, Arrow Farms, we've had to bring a couple or many disciplines, disciplines together. So internally, our team is made up of on the engineering side, structural engineers, mechanical engineers, lighting engineers, electrical engineers, PLC engineers, process engineers, industrial engineers, and there's system engineers. And this group that works on the mechanical frames 
works closely with the biological side that's made up of crop biologists, crop physiologists, horticulturists, crop pathologists, molecular biologists <clears throat> that are working on the plant side. And we realize that these two have to work symbiotically. So we're farming and we're creating technology. We're creating the mechanical structures. What these systems look like, and I'll use from US-based metrics, so they're approximately 36 feet high, in which there are 12 going on to 14 levels of growing, so approximately every yay high. There's another growth media, and they're grown in tunnels, about 80 feet long, about five feet wide, on these trays, and the trays move down the tunnel, and we give the plant what it wants, when it wants it, how it wants it. The field farmers work to match the genetics to the field, here we match the natural environment to the genetics. We do work with some of the big ag tech companies to optimize what seeds grow best in an indoor environment. And in the outdoors, you might specify a seed looking for drought resistance or mold resistance or pest resistance. And for us, we look to maximize taste, texture, as well as yield and we're able to enhance these qualities. So aero farms, we're a lot of, we're very data centric. We take approximately 30,000 data points from seed to harvest for the biggest farm in the world that we're building now. That equates to about 24 million data points a day. And we have a team of data scientists that are looking at what are the links between what the plan gets and what the outcome is and really trying to understand plant biology to ultimately become better farmers and ultimately give the customer a better experience.